Whether you still rely on some form of paper calendar to get through your day, or you just need a better way to keep track of your appointments, a well-organized calendar is an essential part of life. Outlook's calendar offers tools that are easy for the novice, yet powerful enough for the busy executive. And because it works seamlessly with your email, your tasks, and your contacts, it is the answer to staying organized. Let's have a look at what's coming up in our session's third component, the Outlook Calendar. I'll be showing you effective, time-saving techniques to use Outlook 2010 to plan your daily activities. I'll show you how to redefine Outlook's default settings so that it displays the work week, the holidays, and time zones that are meaningful to you so that you get the most out of using the Outlook Calendar. I'll show you how to navigate appointments and jump to specific blocks of time that'll make it easier to compare your availability across select dates. I'll then demonstrate a neat little trick, or two, for sharing your calendar with someone outside your company, as well as introduce a method you can use to analyze how you're spending your time. You can access the calendar in Outlook by clicking the calendar button in the navigation pane. If you look up to the Arrange group on the ribbon, the default view is to show one day at a time, but I prefer to change this to either the work week or the full week, which will show the full seven days, Sunday through Saturday. It's good to know that Outlook will remember my preferred choice, so the next time I open up my calendar, it'll show me the full work week view. I can quickly navigate to another week by just clicking on a date in the mini calendar, and I can quickly return to today's date by just clicking on the Today button. If I hold on to my mouse button while dragging over a block of days in the mini calendar, it will show me those that I've selected in the main calendar. Additionally, if I need to get an overview of random dates, say for instance that a customer is asking me about my availability on the 10th, the 19th, and the 28th of September. To do that, I have a great little trick. First, I'll choose the day view, and then I'll click on all the dates in question. 10, 19, 28, and do that all while holding down the control key. As you can see, this eliminates the need of going back and forth by providing me with a side-by-side -side preview so that I can determine which is the best day and time. And another terrifically useful navigation tip allows me to jump to any point in time using keywords. To do this, press control G on your keyboard and then enter a specific date or, my favorite, just write in normal language, as in third Monday in December. And there we go, third Monday in December 2012. This shortcut is very useful, especially if you're looking at booking nonspecific dates that are far in the future. Before you start using your calendar, I recommend that you configure Outlook to show exactly what you want. To do that, go to the Backstage in the File tab and click Options. Then go to Calendar. And let's start with setting your work time. Since I usually have meetings past 5 p.m., I'll change this to 6 p.m. This will also change the time that the Scheduling Assistant will use to suggest appropriate times for my meetings. By default, Outlook adds reminders to all appointments. I personally find this annoying. So, I uncheck this option and trust myself to add it manually when I schedule appointments that I don't want to miss. I can also choose to add holidays from different countries. So here I'll just select the United States for now and click OK. And lastly, if I want to add different time zones, this is a must if you're working with people from different parts of the world. So first, I'll just put a label on my current one. New York City, and then I'll choose to show a second time zone. I'll label this UK and select the time zone for London. And then I'll click OK. And as you can see, I now have the two time zones side by side in my calendar. And obviously, this is invaluable if you often schedule meetings across time zones. Now I won't be covering the basic creation of new appointments and inviting others to meetings, but I'd like to give you a few productivity tips around how to label and customize your calendar entries so you'll know at a glance what's going on in your work week and so you can use the calendar most efficiently. Outlook also gives you a way of labeling the blocks of time for your appointments with either free, 
tentative, busy, or out of the office. If others have access to your calendar, they can use this information to see when you're available. But even if you're not sharing your calendar with others, this is a useful tool for your own knowledge. Busy is the default option, and I use this for any appointment where I don't want to be interrupted. The tentative I use for appointments that have yet to be confirmed. I will also use it when I schedule admin work because I want others to know that I'll be available in case an urgent issue arises. The free time I use for things that don't require my involvement. For instance, if they're upgrading something in my office, they're working on the printer that day, something I'd like to have on my calendar, but it doesn't mean that I'm busy. Finally, the out of office. I use when I'm out of the office, but uh, I also will use this for vacation or for other appointments when I'm not in the office. I can also mark an appointment as private. If it's marked as private, there will also be a small lock, a little padlock down in the bottom right hand corner. This tells me it won't be visible to anyone that I share my calendar with. You must have guessed by now that I am in love with email and task categories. Well, you can also use categories to organize your appointments. So for instance, anything I see here in green, I can tell at a glance is a phone call because I've categorized it with the at phone category. And these here in orange tell me their client meetings categorized with the at meeting category. I also have a category for when I'm conducting training. So at a glance I can see the purple blocks and they tell me right away that I'm out of the office and completely inaccessible. And here I have a private appointment at Motor Vehicle, which appears in green, which means it's personal. And frankly, if it's Motor Vehicle, it should be allotted a lot more time than an hour. So as you can see, if you're really thoughtful about how to categorize, you can have quite a useful system for analyzing exactly how you're spending your time. Now unfortunately, Outlook does not offer very advanced reporting tools. But if you wanted to, you can export all of your appointments into Excel and arrange your data by category and then do an analysis there. Lastly, Outlook 2010 gives you the ability to easily forward your calendar as an email to anyone you wish, inside or outside your company. If you've ever tried to arrange a meeting with someone outside your company, You'll appreciate being able to selectively share your availability, showing your free and busy times for the next day, week, month, or any period you wish. To share your calendar, right-click on the calendar you wish to send in the navigation pane. Click Share, and then Email Calendar. You'll then see a dialog box in which you could select the date range you'd like to share. So I'll select date range September 3 through September 28th. Then I can choose the details I want to share, such as free and busy time only, appointment subjects only, or last choice, pretty much everything. You can also limit the shared information to work hours only. When done, click OK. It will then generate an email with the calendar information you requested, laid out day by day, and from here, you can address it to whomever you please. Let's recap what we've covered in calendar management. First, I showed you how to configure Outlook's default settings to display the specific working hours that you prefer, and also how to display a five-day or seven-day work week. I also walked you through how to populate your calendar with U.S. holidays, as well as add a second time zone. Then we learned some tricks using the mouse to view date ranges side by side and to jump ahead to future dates using the keyboard shortcut Control G. We then reviewed how to label appointments most effectively, demonstrating when it's appropriate to mark appointments as busy versus out of the office and what should be considered free time versus what should be labeled as tentative. I then showed you how to send your availability to others by first selectively choosing the calendar details you wish to share. And then we closed up this chapter by discussing how to label your appointments to quickly assess how much time you spend on certain activities, such as personal time versus the time you spend at work on project meetings or client-based phone calls.